I'm shooting the clock. Okay, but let's let's try to get it on paper at least. I mean, I want someone to tell me how to do that. All right, well, we'll see if we can get it on. All right, <sighs> so tell me how to do that. All right, so here, here we go. Easy little video, easy little thing. Let's talk about the five things you're doing wrong when shooting pistols. Everybody, welcome back to Classic Firearms. We're out here at the range today, and of course I'm Matt, and this is Jason. Hey guys. So Jason, you know, one of the things that I do get a lot of comments now, guys, in that intro, I'm I was aiming off target. Like I was just like a little He can really shoot. <laughs> um, but people do legitimately say, Matt, like how, how, why do you hold the pistol that way? Like you're not holding it right. Nobody ever really explains what I'm doing wrong, but even on videos where like I've I've done better than Clint on some things. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, I can't believe you hit the target the way you hold that gun. So tell me. What are, what are some things that can help me? All right, so there are five things that I like to pretty much use as a gauge to help me with pistol shooting. First of all is a solid stance, man. Okay. I mean, that's just what it is. Stance equals strength. I know I've got stability. I know I've got a straight line where I need to be and I'm presenting to the target. So first of all, all right. let's just get that. Nice yeah. little fighting stance. So I would be like something like that. Yeah, so you're left-handed, so yep. you could switch it up and switch your feet. I want to be able to draw a straight line from one heel to one toe of yours. Right. Heel I mean, to toe, gotcha. Yeah. And then go from there, right? So including that, I know that you've got a solid foundation, a solid base that when the recoil does happen, it's not going to send you rocking back. Not like this is a crazy, you know, high powered gun or anything. Just a nine mil clock 34. But, it's not Hollywood folks. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it keeps you on a solid foundation and base. All right. So cool. from there, going on to your grip. All right. Number two. Oh, sorry. Number two, going into your grip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Grip is very foundational for me. It keeps the pistol where it needs to be. Now, a lot of people have a different, a lot of different fundamentals when it comes to grip. Now, people do the push-pull method. I think you're more familiar with that. Yeah, so I always like to kind of push with my dominant hand mm -hmm. and pull back with my, my off hand. There you go. Me, on the other hand, I act like it's a horseshoe that I'm trying to pull apart. So when I say that is, I've got these two hands that are pulling away from each other to anchor my wrist in and lock mm -hmm. them in while I'm absorbing that recoil. All right, so more lateral than... Correct. All right, so like, you know, I kind of like twist this out and twist this back over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it's a little weird. Yeah. I mean, I would weird. take a little bit of practice getting used to, but okay. I can see how, how that could work. Okay, good deal. So going on number three is going to be that most important trigger prep. So for me, when I prep the trigger, if you hold that out, all right, all right, I don't want to just slap it on there. I need to have a definite place. I need to have a definite spot and find the middle blade with the Glock. You all do right, so real quick, just on camera, we're mm -hmm. going to show, you know, totally empty there. Yeah. I like to find a middle spot and middle angle. I put my finger right in the middle of it. What that does is it presents a perfect presentation for it. And when I pull the trigger, because due to how fingers work, pull it back, it's equal every time. I'm not overdoing it or putting my booger hook so far in that it's gonna make the jump flinch or go to the right and right. or left. So it's right there, repeatable every single time. So going into number four, we're gonna talk about presentation. When I mean presentation, I don't mean you're just gonna bowl it out there. Depending on where you, what you're doing, if you're running it from concealment, if you're running on a holster, I'm not gonna just bowl it out there. So when I present, I make sure I keep everything in a straight line as much as possible, whether it be straight from here and have my hands meet up when I go to grab this gun and when I punch out and go to work. I know, right? <laughs> when I punch you're out, I throw- throwing the lingo at you. I am throwing the lingo at you. Um, but when I get there, I try to make sure everything's straight and where it is. So as you can see right here, when I present, my hands, I come out and you see my hands, they turn, which locks my wrist in together and that allows me to absorb that recoil. But not, not only that, if I have to transition, it allows me to do it quicker and faster instead of pushing and pulling where I'm over driving the gun or under driving the gun, if that makes any sense. So there you go. So number five, one of the most important things for me, just like you know how NBA shooters have that, you know, leaving the hand up, mm -hmm. what's that called? All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with a pistol. This is a precision thing that you're doing, a marksmanship thing doing that you're doing, so you're gonna go ahead and do that. So go ahead and present. You've got that presentation going, you've gone through one through four, and now we're at five on the follow through. So after you break that shot, you're gonna make sure that you're there and you just don't put it away. Your muscles aren't so tense, you can relax a little bit, absorb that recoil because this is a controlled explosion that you ultimately 
have full control over, right? So when that thing recoils, it's gonna come up, it's gonna come down, and you can find yourself and find your eyes back on dot and or sights, if you don't have a dot, to follow through on another shot. Now the best thing to do to increase probability of hits afterwards mm -hmm. is just to keep pr that pressure on that trigger. Don't let there and sit there and slap it like that because slapping causes inconsistencies throughout. Mm -hmm. You could place it on the far left, you could place it on the far right, you could place it on the middle. So the best thing to do is just prep it right there from the wall, continue that follow through on the trigger and keep on going. So that's like uh, finding the reset. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So I think that uh, maybe something that'd be kind of helpful as far as the video uh, and, and me personally mm -hmm. is maybe we load a magazine, yeah. uh, you can observe me shoot and I'll just try to shoot the way I normally would. Yeah. And then maybe you can give me some pointers and then we'll try shooting again with with your more of your input. I like it. Yeah. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right, so first thing, I'm going to shoot and just try to do it like I normally would. Yeah, no okay. problem. So first of all, do you really need pointers? Or? <laughs> I'm just saying. Again, I, I get this comment a lot. People say, Matt, you're holding the gun wrong. But they never explain what I'm doing wrong. Right. And... I mean, to be honest, I mean, certainly when it comes to compared to say Kai or Clint, mm. I'm a much weaker, weaker shooter with handguns than those guys are. Now, I don't think we've gotten to shoot handguns mm. together. Uh, so you haven't observed that, right. but uh, I mean, I definitely think I could use some practice. Okay, so here you go. A couple of things that I would say is you're driving the gun down a little bit. Okay. So that could be just because it's a longer slide, maybe. It could be because you're not used to it and that's about it. And other than that, just bring it up and you don't have to keep your hands and arms so stiff when you shoot. Gotcha. Um, allow it to be out here and to have a break in the elbow. So the reason why I do this is when the recoil does happen and if I ever have to transfer targets, I'm not stiff out here where I'm gonna overdrive the gun and miss. Sure. Does that make sense? Now, I think one reason I do that, you know, I, I drive out and I'm very straight. Mm -hmm. It's because again, that kind of push pull. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really pushing and I'm really pulling okay. and I'm trying to kind of, you know, get it way out there. But like you said, I, I definitely feel like that could be a hindrance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, plus, you know, if, if just as it recoils, it's, it's more motion Correct. because it's a longer lever. Correct. So, so I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you the pointer. This is what I mean by when I say my, uh, pulling the horseshoe apart versus push pull and I'll show you something like right. All right. Okay. So when you get into transitions, especially going from it's one target to another, it's good to make sure you give yourself a little leeway and that you're not so stiff. The reason why, if you are stiff, you will nine times out of 10 over confirm and shoot past what you need to do. So here's a little demonstration. So two in the head of box. There we go. That didn't work out as best as I thought, but it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, after you've got all that stuff mastered down, let's work on some stuff that's gonna help the consistency through and also the follow through that's probably one of the most important things, right? So I think the easiest thing for me to do to gauge whether or not you've got good follow through is doing a couple of control pairs. Okay. Right? So we're gonna do fire two shots simultaneously and let's see where those shots land. So two shots as fast as you can? Uh, comfortably at your okay. speed. So it doesn't have to be, you know, you're not trying to blaze the target down, but you wanna have good consistency where there's no lag. Okay. Okay, so let's try that out. Hey, all right. Come on, go. What's up? Come on, go. All right. There you go. Okay. All right. Go check out these hits. All right. So I tried to move it around the target a little bit just so they weren't all grouped too tight together. Oh, okay. Thank you. Let me dust off your shoulder there. Well, no, I'm just saying. So, you know, like, like this would be kind of hard so yeah. I did aim to up up here I am down here mm -hmm. like I mean I was I was trying to spread them out a little bit just so we could see the groups oh, you're fine man this is one of the best control pairs that you have yes obviously not even a, a one one inch split this one's good I take that as an acceptable hit factor as well granted if they were in a zone we can't even bar but like you said you were trying to spread them out so it's all good all of these are all in pretty much line with each other. So that's something that's very positive. You're doing all of the fundamentals put together, just having to split them up and there you go. Now you talked about me kind of overdriving. Right. And so I think that's where you see a lot of them are vertically strung, mm -hmm. right? So you, this one's really good, but it's still, you know, one on top of the other. And then you can see all these hits where mm -hmm. there's kind of like vertical string. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's kind of part of that, right? Like as I, I'm, I'm following through, mm -hmm. but I just push too far, so. Could be, but we'll put out all those, um, 
factors and put it all together and I appreciate it. All, all right. right, you ready? Yeah, we're doing one more time, right? Yeah, one more time. So you got your proper stance. Oh. Yep. You're good to go. You got your grip, you're good. Yep. Your presentation, you relax and you follow through and let's get it. Well, that's how I'm gonna be single. Well, I got you. Shoulder down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go take a look at it. Mm. So I kind of try to alternate this side to this side. Okay. But well, there is one thing that you did that we didn't even talk about, but this is an honorable mention. You actually did shot calling. So you saw where that shot went without even having to really come up on target for it. That is a quite an advanced skill. A lot of people don't have the foresight to do that, and you know exactly where it went, so kudos to you, man. But yeah, these groups are looking pretty decent after you double them. Now, I will say on the camera, it looks like it's all over the place, but it's not because we actually know where he shot before. But yes, these groups are pretty controlled, especially this one right here. Love that one, for sure. I think you put everything together, man. It was looking pretty decent. Nice. Awesome. I mean... So definitely uh, one of the things I think just would help me improve is just more practice. Like a lot of shooters out there, I probably don't practice enough. Um, and I feel like that's uh, something to be said for a lot of gun owners, right? Uh, we often on camera have talked about the importance of practice and training. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it's really hard to get out and do it. You got job, family, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think that it just goes to show you that, you know, your skills, uh, you know, you really to take them to the next level, you, you got to practice to have the control and the proficiency. Correct, and I will say shooting is a perishable skill. So the more you come out here and do it, the more you'll be able to actually execute and do it properly. Well guys, uh, we definitely appreciate you coming into this video on some of the fundamentals of pistol shooting. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you go check out cfcontest.com because it's lots of fun stuff over there. Cool I mean, stuff. it's definitely worth a visit. Yeah. Um, but until then, God. thank you for your business. Yeah, God bless. And we'll see you next time at Classic.